Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am sitting in Rogers parking lot. Well, actually the Holy Family Church parking lot, which is behind Rogers. And I'm really close to the building today. I had to go by where the shade is. There's a big old tree right there that provides a spot of shade. Usually I'm further ahead. <laughs> so many things become issues for me. I, um... I have the windows down, so you may hear some traffic, but there's a nice breeze, and I thought I would just have the windows open for a change, listen to traffic instead of my air conditioner. I came here because the Chuck Steak is on sale for $3.59, and Sunday is the last day of their sales. The new week starts Monday. I was kind of sad because I didn't have a whole lot of room in my freezer, but I checked, and their new flyer shows that it will also be on sale next week for the same price and the London broil will be on sale for $2.79 so I only picked up three packages of Chuck today and I'm actually going to show it to you I hope that I can you know rearrange and then next week I will come and get some London broil at $2.79 and some more Chuck and I will be a happy happy girl so let's do a little haul because I did buy a couple of things. I forgot to get milk, but that's okay because I can just run here next week for some milk. It gives me a chance to chat with you and pick up a couple of steaks and then try to come back again Sunday, the last day of the sale, because my freezer will be a little bit emptier and I can stock up then. Okay, first, my mother is very particular about things. Anytime I bring something home to my mother, I never know how it's going to go. Unless it's, well, I shouldn't even say unless it's, you know, a staple that she actually has to have all the time. But she has poo-pooed many of her staples. For instance, one of them was the cinnamon raisin bread that she's eaten all her life. All of a sudden, one day I brought it home. This is while Skylar was with me. My mother likes to cause conflict or put me in my place when she knows that my attention is with someone else and not with her because she's narcissistic and she announced that she was allergic to cinnamon and it was like you know said to me in a way that I should know that to make matters worse I just said oh that's fine I will just put it in the freezer I'm sure Skyla will like it <laughs> that's not the reaction she wants when she says things like that to me she's looking for um, a sign that she upset me or that I, you know, felt bad, that I did wrong, that kind of thing. It's been a long time since I've ever showed her that I felt bad, that I did wrong. It's usually that I just get pissed off. <laughs> there are times that I will bring her chocolate bars and it's as though I brought her poison and you guys know how much she loves her candy, her sweets, especially her chocolate bars. I always buy her those boxes of, I think it's what, 18 bars in a box or something. Those are her favorite. She has been a chocolate bar whore my entire life. And sometimes when I bring it home, it's like I've insulted her by just assuming that she would want such a thing. And she'll even go a while without even touching it. And that happened most recently. The last tag along to Walmart, I believe, I bought her chocolates, that box, and it was uh, untouched for several days. When I even asked, have you had a chocolate bar yet? Oh no, it's like, you know, why would I ever want a chocolate bar? It's just head games with her all the time. So, let's get back to the point, because there was one. <laughs> This cover is not working. They had potato salad on sale for $1.99 a pound. And this was 86 cents. Prepared foods is a pretty much big no-no to my mother. So I should know better, but I thought maybe, just maybe, she would like to try something. But she's not one for prepared foods. She doesn't like foods from restaurants. She doesn't want anything to do with like potluck dinners, that type of thing, because she's grossed out by the way she knows the food is probably prepared. And I get that. I do know that even in restaurants, you'd be horrified at some of the stories. But my thing is, I've eaten at restaurants. I've eaten at potluck. I guess what I don't know isn't going to bother me. It, just like stuff like this, any deli you go to, you don't know if somebody sneezed in this shit. I mean, we just don't know. So 
we're always taking a chance. But since this was on sale, I thought I'd buy her a little tub. Now, what I hate about this is that if it's something she doesn't like, I'm not eating it because I'm not eating vegetables of any kind. I'm certainly not eating potato salad. So it'll go out to the, I was going to say to the rascals. What is it I have? Raccoons. Started with R. I was close. So I have no clue how this is going to fly. I do not buy this in an attempt to start a fight. But uh, I don't know. And it might go over good. I'll let you know next time I'm chatting with you here. I also bought this imitation crab meat. I have company. <laughs> Again, even this, sometimes she doesn't want it. The last time she was like, you can just bring that on your side of the house. I don't think I'll be eating any. It's like, all right, what fucking ever? I do. Does she have to come right next to my fucking car? <sighs> Is that a baby pig or a dog? I think it's a pig. A tiny little pig. How can I show you? Oh my god. Look at that. I'm trying to not get caught. Is that a pig? Why can't I tell? But I can't. It didn't run like a pig. No, that's got to be a dog. Oops. Why can't I tell the difference between a pig and a dog? What is wrong with me? A pig wouldn't have a straight tail, would it? It doesn't walk like a pig. All right, I don't know if I can get another image or not. That's got to be a dog. I'm just an idiot. Oh my god, those people have to be right next to me now. My window's open and they're right there. Do I have to move? starting to look like a weirdo stalker. I'm just staring at that animal. Now oh, there's kids outside too. I think I have to move. <laughs> I wonder if they think it's strange that I just like moved my car from one place in a parking lot to another. <laughs> anyway, I guess I need to go study kids books about what animals look like. I have no clue. I've never seen a dog that looked like that in my life. Oh my god. Back to my mother. I can eat this. So this will not go wasted. And I do like it. Even though I'm just big on beef lately. Why do you feel so far away? Why? What's wrong? I do, I do like this. Did I buy some bacon ends too? Yeah, I did. I haven't been buying that, but I did buy some. Lasts a real long time. I don't know, just thought I would. I used to have bacon ends every single day. Still $2.99 a pound, and it's just the ends of bacon or, you know, the meat that they're cutting into slices. It's not pretty slices, so it's called bacon ends. And I did get my mother this too. Bologna that's on sale for $1.79 a pound on Sunday. So they had some pound packages already cut and I grabbed one of those. And this is what the chuck looks like. This is a smaller one. It's just, you know, fatty and I love it so much. Again, I just cook it in a pan. I start on high for like a minute or two on each side and then I put it down to medium for like maybe another minute or two on each side. It all depends like on the thickness and then I turn it to low or, or sometimes if it's not too thick I just turn it off and I just leave it in the pan for like 15-20 minutes. Kind of flip it over a little bit now and then and I just let it rest and it is so incredibly delicious and tender. Do love very much. So I got three like this. That's all they had out, and that's pretty much probably what I have room for. Okay, I have a question that I know is going to start a conversation, probably. It's also going to make me lose subscribers, and I say this because I know it. <laughs> I have, you know, so many new subscribers that come in, and I feel bad when they say in the comments things like, oh, you're so awesome, you're so kind, you're so good, because they don't really know me, and they're the ones that are, like, shocked when all of a sudden they see a video where I'm swearing or, you know, where I'm having my own opinions on my own channel, and they're very vocal about how they 
didn't know me at all. I thought you were wonderful. I thought you were awesome. But you are sick and you need help. And I'm leaving this channel. Although they stick around long enough to go back and forth with me. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is an actual question that I think is worth asking. Right now, we know we've been having hurricanes. There's another one hitting Florida today. We had Harvey that destroyed Houston, and Irma right now is doing a number on Florida and other islands and stuff before it got there. When there's things like this going on, there's a lot of praying getting done. My Facebook messages is like prayer chain after prayer chain after prayer chain. And then, you know, Facebook is filled with prayers for those in the path of the hurricane. My question is, first, who are people praying to? If the answer to that is God, then the other question is, what are you praying for? Because if I were to believe in God... I would be all in. I'm an all or nothing person. If I really believed God was good and that God was the creator of this world, I would not second guess a thing that he or she does. I was brought up as a Catholic and I don't know if this is a Catholic rule or just what was taught to me by my own family. Catholics were not big on studying the Bible. We had catechism classes, but I don't remember us ever like reading passages from the Bible and learning what they meant or being told what, you know, the interpretation meant of it. I think it's because there's a lot of shit in the Bible. <laughs> that if you're to believe this, well, you also have to believe that. And that's another thing that bugs me is people that will pick and choose the things to believe in the Bible and then the other things, well, it's out of context and, you know, they didn't know any better back then, but yet they knew this as the gospel truth? I don't know. But anyway, back to praying. I would be the type that would be all in with God and I would absolutely trust that he knows or she what he or she is doing. I tend to lean towards saying he because I think a woman would have done a better job. <laughs> Sorry guys, but for the most part, I think women tend to look ahead better, you know, and they can say, all right, like if my child has a cup of milk with no cover on it and it's a toddler, that child is going to make it to the new carpet that we just bought and that's where it's going to be spilt. And a man will just give a child a cup with no cover and think that the kid's going to just drink the milk and not spill it. <laughs> If you're praying to God for the hurricane, are you saying to God, Dear God, I am so happy that you're bringing this hurricane upon us because I'm sure you have a good reason to do so, and I trust that if you wipe out people, you know what you're doing. Is that the kind of prayer? I was taught as a Catholic, at least in my circle, that destruction, you know, things like hurricanes, storms, anything, natural disasters that happen were a sign from God that he was unhappy with how things were going. I say, who the hell does he have to blame but himself? If he was the creator, couldn't he have fucking created something that he didn't have to mess with later? I know people say, well, you know, everybody's got free will. And again, why give somebody free will if you're going to, like, play head games and say, you've got free will, but there's so many things I do not want you to do with that. So if this is destruction because the world is not abiding by God's rules or whatever, shouldn't those who believe in God, you know, pray that God does a good job in cleaning up the shit? You know, because if he is indeed angry and is causing hurricanes, because you have to believe that God's in charge of a hurricane. If you think he created the universe, he can certainly take care of a couple of hurricanes and put them to a stop if he wants. You know, I, I don't understand that. And you'd have to trust that he's doing what is right and that you should rejoice and be happy about that even if it takes some of your own family out. If you believe in God, 
Isn't that what everybody who believes in God is aiming for? An eternity with God? Why would you be even upset if your own family was taken out in a hurricane? You should say, geez, God, thank you for doing what you felt was right because um, I know you don't make mistakes and you saw it fit to wipe out my home and take out three of my immediate family members and I'm going with what you decided because you're God and I love you and I believe in you. Then there's, I guess, some who would say, well, God created the universe and, you know, just kind of like put it out there and is just going to let nature take its course and do things. He's not punishing people with a hurricane. Well, again, isn't that kind of a lousy job? Why create a universe and then let shit like that happen? And even take out some people who are probably very, very good people. See, I don't get that either. Because it's not necessary. God didn't have to play games like that. I'm going to give you guys the universe and bye-bye. Uh, I'll just let it do whatever it wants. And once in a while, I'll come in with a miracle. Once in a while. Because I don't have a whole lot of time for miracles. <laughs> and most miracles were already done. Because now people can figure out that my miracles are more like a magic trick like raising someone from the dead they were probably in a coma people can start to understand things like that now so i can't be like raising people from the dead how many people have been risen from the dead lately i don't think too many unless you want to believe that you know those few instances that still happen where somebody wakes up in a body bag in a morgue i mean that has happened not too long ago do you want to think that that person was raised from the dead or that the morgue people or the doctors or whatever just couldn't really tell medically that this person was still alive or just needed to be like moved around a little bit to get the heart pumping again. I don't know. But I don't see that as a miracle. I see it as a medical mystery, not a miracle. And uh, if you say, well, yes, God does have the ability to raise people from the dead, why wouldn't everybody assume that it could happen and not be looked at like you're crazy if you say, um, you know, my child died, but I'm pretty sure I can have that child back because God can raise it from the dead. Did you ever see a movie with, I believe it was Rosanna Arquette and... Oh, I know the actor's name, and I can't think of it. He played like one of the dumb cops in Beverly Hill Cops. I, I, Judd? Is it Judd something? I don't remember, but there was a movie that they had let their son die because they didn't believe in medicine or whatever. They were letting it be in God's hands, and they had people praying all around this child all the time, and then when the child died, they were accused of child abuse or whatever because they you know, didn't give the child the care that it needed. And people thought they were absolutely nuts because they insisted that their child be buried with his shoes on. Just, I mean, there was other things because they felt if they prayed enough, God would raise their child from the dead. And everybody was like, what are you fucking talking about? You know, and it's like, okay, so there goes the faith. You know, people don't really believe in the things that they believe in, do they? I don't know. So anyway, it just makes me wonder. It's not that I, I want to say that I hate what people believe, but I just want to know, really, what you expect to come from prayer. Or, again, just what are you praying for? Because if I believed in God, I would be just praying and being thankful that God is taking care of things the way He sees fit, and you're good with whatever happens. See, that would make more sense to me. I, I just think that people who believe in God don't really believe, at least not the way I would, because again, I would be all or nothing. I would be giving my entire self to God and letting God do anything He wants, and I would expect to feel happy with every single decision. But I'm not happy with what goes on in this world. I'm not happy that innocent people are killed by hurricanes, or that people abuse their children, or just, you know, any of the shit that goes on that I think is crappy. So that's one good reason for me to not believe in God, because if I had to believe in God and these things happened, I would believe that God is a fucking asshole, a control freak, somebody who plays head games. Who wants a God like that? I, 
again, I know, I know so many of you are leaving right now because I just said that that kind of a god to me would be an asshole. But it would! That would be an asshole to me. I wouldn't want that kind of god in my life. If I were to believe in God, I would be good with whatever. With whatever, because that's the only way I'd be able to believe. And I just don't understand people who pray for something to not happen. A lot of people pray to God and say, please, please don't let that happen. Please, please don't let my child die. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. Or, please do these things. Please do this thing. And, and even though the results are different, people just keep praying for things that they want and assume that God will listen to their pleas and cries and they're just okay with it not happening 90% of the time. <laughs> and they just keep praying like my mother has prayed all her life for things that she will never get. And, and she gets mad, like for instance, my mother prays all the time that my one of my brothers, who is seven, almost 74, and he's a lifelong alcoholic, still very much actively drinking. I don't know how he is alive. His brain is fried, and my mother prays every day that he will stop drinking. And the last time she spoke to him, she was mad at him because, I pray for you every day, and I have all your life, and you still choose to drink. I don't know why you don't listen to God. He knows I'm praying for you. And my mother is mad at my brother instead of being mad at God. Or at least saying to God, I guess that you have a plan for my son, God. And if you think it's best for him to be an alcoholic until the day he dies, then I'm, I'm good with that. You know, but she gets mad at my brother who doesn't even give a shit or know that she's praying all the time for him. And she's mad at him because she thinks that God must be, like, at him constantly to stop drinking, but yet my brother's not listening. But wouldn't God have the power, if he wanted to, to just say, boom, you're done drinking? <laughs> I know I will probably um, get so much shit for this video, but you know what? I think there are some of you out there who probably think the same way I do. Again... Everything has to be logical to me, and this makes no sense that people pray to stop a disaster or to keep people safe in a disaster when God is the creator of the disaster. He doesn't make mistakes, right? Didn't he create hurricanes, or did he just put a universe out there and kind of like, again, just do a shitty job and just like, okay, I'm not gonna fix those things. I'll fix some other things when I want to, but I'm not gonna fix that. Let's just, yeah, whatever, let it be. And, uh, you know, some people will just think I'm cleaning up the world because of the gays out there. <laughs> and that's what my mother believes. Not the gays part, but my mother believes that God is cleaning up. He's mad. He's pissed off, so he's gonna destroy a bunch of people or things like that to give a message. If you don't behave, I'm gonna fuck up your world. And it doesn't matter, I guess, that many innocent people are knocked out at the same time. I don't know. Am I innocent or what? Who are the ones that are not innocent? Who is worthy of being wiped out? I don't know. Is a serial killer worthy to be knocked out? Isn't that still a child of God? Did God do a good job with that person? <laughs> he gave that person free will, but he made it fucking impossible for that person to behave in a way that we think is acceptable. <laughs> All right, leave your comments. I'm going to leave the comments open on this one. And to all of you who are leaving, you don't have to tell me you're leaving. You can just go. You can just go. You don't have to say, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And never really leave. That's the funny part. I'm going to go home and cook some steak. And I won't be praying for hurricanes. I just I won't be saying prayers. And um, I just won't. Because who, who, who am I going to pray to? Oh, creator of hurricanes, please don't do this even though I love you and I believe in you. I don't know. It just makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. My God, I'm so embarrassed. Um, it makes no sense. Does it make sense to you? I bet you won't be able to win an argument with me in the comments. I bet you won't. <laughs> and you shouldn't 
be able to because it's my channel and of course I'm not going to say stuff like this unless I really believe it. I don't think somebody's going to come in and change my mind in a comment under a YouTube video because my mind has thought about this since I was a wee little thing and had first thoughts. I, it just never made sense to me. So thank you so much for watching, I think, and I will be back with more soon. Bye!